Let's get into this discussion now. Parliament has this week heard that the police minister, Peggy Tlele, has been without an office for almost uh, four years now. It's due to the police headquarters uh, being declared unsafe. Let's speak about this now with uh, the Public Works Portfolio Committee member, Wayne Thring. Mr. Thring, good evening to you and thank you for your time. What reasons have you as a committee been given for the Minister of Police staying away from working in the headquarters for four years, but this week the understanding is that the entire building uh, was evacuated because it simply is not fit for human habitation. Well, thank you for, for having me, firstly, and I think it actually boggles the mind that we actually find ourselves in a situation such as this. Um, bearing in mind, if one looks just uh, very briefly the background, that uh, the taxpayers' money was used, to, some $695 million, uh, was used to purchase these, the telecom towers. Mm. And essentially there's about five to six buildings, uh, five to six towers that were purchased. And the intention for the purchase of those towers was that they would be able to be used to house our sister departments, the sister departments to the Department of Public Works, like SAPS and perhaps the military um, or, or other sister departments. SAPS was one of the main uh, sister departments uh, that were targeted. Now, those buildings have been lying vacant for over five years. From 2016, uh, SAPS only started to occupy those buildings. The, 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 one of the buildings, one of the towers, of the five to six towers, SAPS only started to occupy one of those around about 2021, 2022. Mm. Um, when we did an oversight visit, uh, we were, as public uh, office bearers and as members of parliament, we were appalled at the condition that some of the uh, SEPs members and workers had to carry out their duties under. Um, one of the things that was very clear was just the, the state in which the building was found. There was lots of litter all over the place. Uh, there were files that weren't properly stored. And then the aircon also wasn't working. When we asked why the aircon was working, now bear in mind that SEPs had now occupied the building. South African police services had occupied the building. And when we asked why the aircon was not, uh, was not working, we were told that somebody had actually stolen the cables, which was on the top floor of uh, some 20-odd story building. So somebody got past SEPs, cut cables, took them out of the building so that the air cons were left in that condition. Wow. I think it is absolutely appalling. It is appalling. It is a crying shame that our taxpayers' money uh, is, is being misused to this particular extent. We were also informed that the, the minister was not able to utilize the offices because the, his office was not ready and he was working from home. At the time, we were taking into an office which was supposed to be his, but the office was empty. And, and, I, and I think that very sadly, South African ratepayers, taxpayers, need to understand that their hard-earned tax money is being wasted. 695 million rand. We also had a uh, managing agent. The previous managing agent was not able to handle the upkeep of the building. And so we had the Development Bank of South Africa uh, that actually came in as the new management agent to turn things around so that SEPS was uh, bring the building up to standard and up to scratch so that SEPS was able to occupy the building. Sadly, it seems that even the new management agent uh, has been unable to meet the requirements as a management agent in order to make the building fit for use. And so it appears as if across the country, we, as members of the opposition in particular, have been challenging the department on this. We, we also have uh, on, on, on our books, or rather, we've been calling for the, uh, the asset register. Our asset register is not up to scratch. Our asset register is not up to date. In that particular meeting where we were present, we also, I, I raised the, the, the issue of looking at what taxpayers are having to pay, what the department is having to pay to rent other offices, private, and, and the, the amount that was paid per square meter is, was exorbitant amounts. Exorbitant so, amounts 
paid for the lease of private offices that SEPs uh, had to use, that SEPs were still using at the time, where we have buildings that are standing that just need a proper upgrade, but for the last seven to eight years, the uh, Department of Public Works has been unable, unable to upgrade a building to the standard that it ought to be so that SEPs and other sister departments are able to perform service delivery functions that South Africans are crying out for. As the ACGP, we are saying that we've heard the SOS, the SOS of service that is needed, order that needs to come to South Africa, and also safety that needs to come for its citizens and for the workers uh, within the different departments. And very sadly, uh, the department continues to fail us time of the time of the time. Mr. Think, let's talk monies. This building was purchased in 2015. I've looked at the figures. 645 million, to be exact, was used to buy this building. The monies it has cost the taxpayer to maintain a building that was partially occupied up until, I think, the 29th of February, when police members had to be evacuated from that building. It has cost the taxpayer 1.6 billion rand to maintain a building that is not occupied. What is the committee's instruction to public works right now so that no monies, no further monies are thrown in this building that is not habitable? You know, in our last oversight visit, uh, we were given the assurance by uh, the officials that were present as well as by the managing agent, which is Development Bank of South Africa, uh, that the building will be brought up to scratch, um, that where there were challenges in terms of the air cons not working, some of the, uh, the elevators not working, um, there were issues with regards to uh, just basic office equipment that was needed um, and working conditions uh, that were not being met. I think very clearly, I can say, safely say that the entire committee uh, the entire committee was not happy. Um, and it is sad that as we come to the end of this sixth administration, that from 2015, 2016, when these buildings were purchased, um, that they are still not fit for habitation. This appears to be a case of where the ruling party uh, sees taxpayers' money as money that can be squandered, and what we as the ACDP are saying, that this is certainly fruitless and wasteful expenditure. There must be accountability. We talk, we talk about consequence management, and I think very clearly I will raise this within our committee that consequence management must follow, that those who made promises that the building will be habitable and fit for habitation uh, and who have not been able to keep their promises, we need to see consequence management uh, in, 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 uh, put in place, and certainly heads need to, heads need to roll in this, in this case. So from the ACDP's perspective, uh, we, we, we are behind the taxpayer on this, uh, we want to see what we call an MPH uh, principle being followed, and that is meritocracy, pragmatism, and, and honesty. And very clearly, uh, there are some officials that are not being honest with us, uh, as well as not being honest with the taxpayer. This week, the understanding is that you were told by the Department of Public Works that it had launched an internal investigation into the mismanagement of the Telcom Towers complex. Now, what investigation is this after so many years of this building standing unoccupied or at least partially occupied? And what will amount of this investigation? Did you get a sense that this is a kind of action that was long taken or this is a story that you are being fed in order, to, uh, in order to appease you, in order to just uh, almost um, to pacify you is the word I'm looking for. When we visited, let me answer your question, uh, Golani. When, when we visited the border post, Mozambique border post and the Jersey barrier wall, 
um, there were millions of rands which, which, which looked at expenditure that was made there and the Bay Bridge uh, border fence, it, it made that uh, a paltry sum as compared to what was put in at uh, the Mozambique border post. Um, hundreds of millions of rands was actually spent um, in terms of the erect, erection of a, a barrier wall to prevent criminals uh, entering into South Africa from the Mo Mozambican side. But the wall was not erected despite the fact that millions of rands uh, had already been spent. I asked the committee uh, and I said to the committee that what we need here is the SIU to get involved and we also need an external audit uh, to be conducted. Uh, unfortunately, um, I, the majority, um, which is the, the, the majority party, the ruling party, used their numbers um, to, uh, to overturn my recommendation. Now, we are not again calling for an internal investigation. Very clearly, uh, here you have, this is fruitless, this is wasteful, wasteful expenditure. The Auditor General will have a field day uh, with, with the fact that you have not compliance with so many regulations um, in, 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 the, in the case of telecom towers. And, and so as the ACDP can very clearly indicate that we are not happy with the call for an internal investigation because we see this as a sweeping under the rug um, of very clear misdemeanors that have been, uh, that have been undertaken and, and work that should have been done that was not done. Uh, and if we continue this way, nobody will be held to account. So I, I want to agree with you. Um, that this is not the, the right step to take. We need an external investigation. We need an external forensic audit also to take place. And those who are held accountable uh, must be held accountable. Uh, and also there has to be consequence management. Wayne Thring, let me thank you very much for your time. The uh, member of the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Public Works. And I can tell you that we are working feverishly in the background to try and get the Minister of Public Works to come talk to us. We remain steadfast uh, to try to get him to come and answer those questions for you.